the endurance of the saints here are they that keep the commandments of god and the faith of jesus you understand the commandments of god that's in our generation today and that will be among the people that are saved at that time and the faith of jesus that's for the present day people and that will be for the people who will be saved at that time and here is here is the patience here is the uh, perseverance of the saints here are they that keep the commandments of god and the faith of jesus we're looking at verse 13 in verse 13 and i heard a voice from heaven saying unto me right blessed at the dead that die in the lord blessed at the dead that die in the lord you understand before this time all those who died in the lord like stephen blessed are they and then all other people that have died for salvation they have salvation they are sanctified they are made holy and they are totally committed to the lord and they died it says blessed are they that die in the lord and the people until this day and until the time of the rapture blessed are the dead that die in the lord and now after the rapture after the rapture when there's the great tribulation and there's great persecution and people will rather die than submit their lives to the antichrist that's the word henceforth there from henceforth that he is even at that time of the great tribulation there will be people that will still believe in the lord and they hold on to the faith of the lord jesus christ and they keep on keeping the commandments of the lord blessed are those people that die in the lord from henceforth yea says the spirit that they may rest from their labors that they may rest from their labors and their works do follow them three things we're looking at number one the patience and readiness of the saints the perseverance and readiness of the saints number two the presentation of rewards for our service every little thing we've done for the glory of god every good thing we've done for the salvation of souls every good thing we've done for the lifting up of those who are falling will be rewarded and it says our work will come into remembrance and there will be the presentation of rewards for our service number three the paradise of rest with our savior the paradise of rest with our savior number one the patience and readiness of the saints it says in revelation chapter 14 verse 12 here is the patience of the saints here is the patience of the saints only saints can be patient sinners are always in a hurry that's why it is still I can't have that. It's going to take a long time before I have that amount of money. They're impatient. They go to steal. And sinners are impatient. They cannot be patient. I need to fulfill the demands of the flesh now. That's why they go to commit adultery and fornication. Sinners are impatient. If the sin is not changing, we're going to change everything by force and violence. They cannot be patient because they are sinners. But the people who know that they, their hope is not here, their hope is for the coming of the Lord and everything God has promised will come to them eventually. They are patient. The patience and the readiness of the saints. Don't let us be sucked into the mood of this world being impatient every time, impatient with yourself, impatient with people, 
impatient with the people of the world, impatient in the place of work, impatient in your family, impatient with your husband. When am I going to have a child? When am I going to carry my baby? Give me a child now as if it's the husband that is going to manufacture the baby. Do it now. Or maybe the husband is telling the wife, when am I going to have my baby? My mother is still alive. And before my mother dies, she must see my baby. Give me a child now as if the woman is the one to manufacture a baby but you know those who are children of God and those who want to get ready for the coming of the Lord the patience and the readiness of the saints of God and let's look at uh, 2 Thessalonians we're looking at chapter 3 in 2 Thessalonians chapter 3 verse 3 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, we're looking at verse 3. It says, But the Lord is faithful, who shall establish you and keep you from evil. The Lord will keep you from evil. The Lord will keep me from evil. The evil of impatience, the Lord will keep you. And the evil of rushing and rushing and rushing into the jaws of death, the Lord will keep you from that evil in Jesus' name. The evil of joining Babylon and saying Babylon says we must have it now, we must have it now, and we determine when we're going to have whatever. That evil of copying Babylon, the Lord will save you from that in Jesus' name. But the Lord is faithful who shall establish you and keep you from evil. Look at verse 4. In verse 4 it says, And we, are, we have confidence in the Lord, touching you, concerning you, regarding you, that he both will do, will do and will do the things that we command you. Everything we have heard in the word of God, in the fellowship, in the service, in the worship of the Lord, today and before and every time we will do everything commanded by the Lord in Jesus' name. In verse 5, verse 5 says, And the Lord direct your hearts into the love of God and into the patient waiting, patient waiting, patient waiting for Christ. The Lord will keep us patient in Jesus' name. And as we see other people, neighbors, community people, always in a hurry, always in a hurry, and they want to do this and do this. Some even want to worship idol so they can have this. Some people get out of the service of God, out of the church of God. They pray for five minutes and then have not got the miracle. Then they go to false prophets because of their impatience. That will not happen to you. It will not happen to me. It will not happen to any of us. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 36. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 36. For ye have need of patience. For ye have need of patience that after ye have done the will of God, ye might receive the promise. Ye have need of patience that after ye have done the will of God. I've checked my life. I've researched my life. I've examined myself. By the grace of God, I'm saved. By the grace of God, I'm sanctified. By the grace of God, I'm doing the will of God. By the grace of God, there is no doubt in my heart. I stand in the doctrine of the word of God. And therefore, I must have this now. What's disturbing me? What's delaying me? What's delaying my chance? After all, I've checked my life and everything is all right. You know what? Look at that verse again. For ye have need of patience that after ye have done the will of God, ye might receive the promise. We, have, we need patience and 
the situation may test your patience. The circumstances may test your patience. After you are saved, after you are sanctified, you are even filled and baptized in the Holy Ghost, and you are at the center of the will of God, and you have prayed for something, and you desire something. Don't go, don't fly off in the spirit of Babylon and say, if I don't have it now, then the house is going to come down. Don't do that. For ye have need of patience that after ye have done the will of God, ye might receive the promise. In verse 37, in verse 37 it says, For yet a little while, for yet a little while, he that shall come will come. Wait for him. Abide in the faith and be patient and let everything be in the hands of the Almighty God. For yet a little while, and he that shall come will come and will not tarry. James chapter 5 verse 7. In James chapter 5 verse 7, be patient therefore brethren unto the coming of the Lord. Be patient until the coming of the Lord. Behold, the Osman man waited for the precious fruit of the earth and has long patience for it. Be like your Lord, be like the Lord, have patience and have long patience for that thing you're expecting until you receive the early and latter rain. Verse 8, in verse 8, it says, Be ye also patient, establish your hearts, for the coming of the Lord draweth nigh. As we're expecting the coming of the Lord, then we're patient and we make sure we retain our Christian experiences, whatever may be happening around us. And on the day of his coming, you will not be disappointed in Jesus' name. Amen. We're looking at number two now. Number two is the presentation of the rewards of our service. The Lord will reward you. Amen. You will not miss your reward. Amen. I will not miss my reward. You will not miss your reward in Jesus' name. Because if we're faithful to the Lord, and in every little thing, and in every big thing, in every challenge, and in everything the Lord has appointed for us to do, the Lord is watching our faithfulness. And when he comes, he'll say, well done, faithful servant. You have been faithful in a little thing, and then you'll be a ruler over many cities. I pray you will not be discouraged and you will not fall from your faithfulness in Jesus' name. Revelation chapter 14, we're reading from verse 13. Revelation chapter 14, reading from verse 13. And I had a voice from heaven saying unto me, Write, blessed are the dead which die in the Lord henceforth. Yea, says the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors and their works do follow them. Their works do follow them. In Hebrews chapter 10, verse 35. Hebrews chapter 10, we're reading from verse 35. He assures us, cast not away therefore your confidence, which has great recompense of reward. Your confidence in the Lord, your devotion to the Lord, and your faithfulness to the Lord. He says, don't cast that off. Whatever happens, trial, temptation, whatever it is, difficulty or challenges, cast not away therefore your confidence in the Lord and your reliance upon the 
Lord and your dependence upon the Lord and your expectation of the Lord that the faithful God will fulfill every promise he has made that confidence you have that made you to pray that confidence you have that makes you to hold on to the promise of God hold on to that until the end you will not be disappointed in Jesus name cast not away therefore your confidence which has great recompense of reward we're looking at revelation chapter 22 and we're reading from verse 12 revelation chapter 22 and we're reading from verse 12 it says behold i come quickly the lord is coming i said the lord is coming is coming to take the saints home is coming to take the children of god the believers is coming to take them home and it says behold i come quickly he'll come suddenly and he's coming very soon he's coming according to the program of god god has the timetable you don't have the timetable and at the right time when the trumpet shall sound the dead in christ will rise incorruptible and those of us that remain abiding in the lord we will be caught up together with them to meet them in the clouds it says behold that time is near i come quickly and my reward is with me and my reward is with me those who endure to the end those who serve unto the end those who are faithful unto the end those who are committed consecrated to the great commission until the end it says my reward is with me to give every man according as his work shall be according as your work shall be you will not miss your reward in jesus name Look at verse 13 there. In verse 13, he tells us, I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Then in verse 14, in verse 14, it says, Blessed are they that do his commandments. I'll be blessed. I said, I am blessed. You are doing his commandment, you are obeying his commandment, and you are following after what the Lord has ordained in his word. Your blessings will be assured in Jesus' name. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life. That the tree of life adam and eve missed when they listened to the devil and they were driven out of the garden of eden out of the paradise of a beauty they were driven out but now it says that tree of life is offered unto you and it says blessed are they which do his commandments that they may have right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the city. May enter in through the gates into the city. You will enter in. I will enter in. All our converts were following up. They remain, they abide in the Lord. They will enter in in Jesus' name. Number three now. Number three, the paradise of rest with our Savior the paradise of rest with our savior we're looking at revelation chapter 14 verse 13 in revelation chapter 14 verse 13 and i heard a voice from heaven saying unto me right blessed are the dead which die in the lord from henceforth yea says the spirit that they may rest from their labors and their works do follow them that they may rest from their labors you will rest i will rest all the trials all the troubles all the labor all the sweating all the up and down 
this is the time of labor this is the time to make sure that we are in the center of the will of god and we resist the devil and everything that will take us away from the final reward and then when he comes there will be eternal rest in the paradise of god in jesus name in revelation chapter 2 verse 7 revelation chapter 2 reading from verse 7 he that has an ear let him hear what the spirit says unto the churches to him that overcometh who is that to him that overcometh you see the house today you will overcome every trial you'll overcome every temptation you'll overcome every influence of babylon trying to suck you in you'll overcome in jesus name Amen. to him that overcometh to her that overcometh will i grant to each of the tree of life which is in the midst of the paradise of god your will rest Amen. the final rest you will not miss it in jesus name Amen. Hebrews chapter 4, reading from verse 9. Hebrews chapter 4, we're reading from verse 9. There remains therefore a rest to the people of God. The people of God, peculiar people of God, they're saved, they're sanctified, and they're continuing with the Lord. There remains therefore a rest to the people of God. You know, even at this time, you rest from all the struggles and the turbulence of the world. You come to Christ. He'll give you peace in your heart and rest in your soul. And then he will give you the joy of, ab of abiding with the Savior and resting from all the attacks and all the things of the world. He will give you rest in Jesus' name. And from this present rest, you will move on unto the perfect, perpetual rest in eternity forever and ever in Jesus' name. Matthew chapter 11, verse 28. In Matthew chapter 11, reading from verse 28, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. There's rest for you today. There's peace for you today. And there is uh, the, the pacifying of the voice of the enemy out of your heart, out of your life today in Jesus' name. But you must come to it, to have the present rest and to have the perpetual rest and to have the perfect rest in the paradise of God. You must come to Christ. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Look at verse 29. In verse 29, it tells us, it says, take my yoke upon you. And learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart. And ye shall find, what are you going to find? I said, what are you going to find? Present rest, perpetual rest, perfect rest. And ye shall find rest unto your souls. In verse 30, it says in verse 30, for my yoke is easy and my body is light. That rest is available for everyone here today. The peace of mind is available for everyone here today. And as it grants us peace now in your heart, and peace in your family, and peace in your community, and peace everywhere, and it gives you that abiding rest, then the peace and rest will continue perpetually. And then eventually in paradise, you'll be in that perfect rest forever and ever in Jesus. Jesus name. 
anybody a candidate for the rest we're talking about there why don't you rise up and say lord i'm here i need rest in my soul and rest in my spirit and rest in my inner man and rest in my brain and rest all around me all the things all the turbulent things that are around all the storms of life i need rest oh lord grant me rest and i know you have promised me you said i shall come and lord i come grant me rest you will give you rest call upon the name of the lord and as you call pray in faith he will not deny the cry the call the prayer and the request of everyone that calls upon the name of the lord with faith and expectation come he will give you rest Brethren, you need to pray. The Lord has promised us rest, abundant rest, gracious rest, perpetual rest. But then, before you walk into that rest, before you navigate into that rest, Remember, Babylon has fallen. The great city had fallen. And what's that great city? The city of Babylon. The dictates of the world, the methods of the world, the system of the world, that's why you need to pray this morning. The Lord knows you. He knows everything about your life. Are you part of that city, Babylon? You know it in your heart, in your soul, in your spirit, in your mind, in your thoughts, in your character. You are still walking the life of the great city, Babylon. That's why you need to pray. It's a time of prayer. And you know you are still in the great city, Babylon. The dictates of the world, the methods of the world, and the system of the world. They are still part and parcel of your life. You have not begun. You have not started. And that's why today you need to make a start and say, Lord, I want to get out of that great city, Babylon. That's why you need to pray. Have you messed up your life? Have you messed up your life? And you know that you are a candidate for hell. You are very sure. You are only covering up. The Lord is saying that you should open up your heart to him. You saw the summit. He said, purge me. Purge me. Purge me, purge me. That's why you need to ask that the Lord will purge you this morning from the filthiness of the city of Babylon. We are before the Lord, and you are right before the Lord. The grace is still flowing. Remember, the great tribulation has not come. And you are here. You have the opportunity. You have the privilege to submit 
to surrender, to give your life to the Lord. Don't let him pass you by. He's walking by you. He's passing by you. He's beckoning to you. He's calling upon you. And he says, my son, my daughter there, my son there, my child there. Are you going to allow the Lord to pass you by? No. The world is filled. The world is treacherous. The world is dangerous. And they are listing you to join there. Here yeah, the Lord is calling you. He's calling you. He's calling you to repentance. He's calling you to conversion. He's calling you to straighten your life. You have messed up your life. Everything about your life is upside down. Yet, you are damaged. You are damaged. You are damaged. But today the Lord is calling upon your lead. And he's calling you. And he said, follow me. You have followed the world enough. And your life is in bondage. And your life is in shackle. And your life is in problem. But the Lord is calling you today. Come unto me. Come unto me. Come unto me. Or you that labor and are heavy laden. And I will give you rest. The rest of your soul. The rest for your soul. Remember the partition on the fall of Babylon. The worldly sister. Babylon has fallen already. It's down on the ground. And you are down on the ground. And the Lord is calling upon you. Are you not going to come today? so that you may rise up again. Are you going to die in your sins? Are you going to die in your iniquity? Pray. Pray and talk to the Lord. Pray and talk to the Lord. You need to understand that the world is passing away and everything about the world and that's why you need to separate yourself and say, Lord, I've not begun, but today I'm beginning. You want to give your life to the Lord today in a new way, in a new way, in a new way. You want to call upon the Lord and say, Lord, here am I. I've been going the way of Babylon, but today I want to surrender. I want to give everything. Maybe your friends have an influence on you. He said, don't go about the way of the Lord. Follow us. And you have been following them. And you have been following them. But you know within your heart, within your conscience, within your life, there is a condemnation in your heart and your soul and your spirit. And the Lord is calling upon you. Is standing by the door of your heart and is calling you and is knocking your heart and he says, Open the door. Are you not going to open the door for the Lord today? The Lord is by your side. Remember, Babylon is falling, completely falling. The world is now, and the world is looking for as many that we go along in the broad way, in the broad way, in the broad way. But narrow is the way, narrow is the way, narrow is the way, so that you can avoid the city Babylon. The Lord is calling upon you, what are you waiting for? What are you waiting for? What are you waiting for? The bridegroom is waiting for you. He says, come and share fellowship with me. Come and enjoy the grace with me. Come over, come over. Come over. The Lord is calling upon you. Pray. Talk to the Lord. Talk to the Lord. Remember that 
as you give your life to the Lord, you need to be consistent. You are not going to be having a periodic graph. Today you are up there. Today you are down here. And at a point you are confused in your life. You are wondering, where do I go from here? But today, there is the opportunity for you. Call upon the Lord. Are you praying? Are you still smoking there? Are you still drinking there? Are you still getting to immorality in there? Are you still getting to stealing there? Are you still getting into fraudulent practices there? And the Lord is telling you, you are going to go down with Babylon. And the Babylon city is gone. It's down. You want to go with Babylon. This is an opportunity for you. My brother, my sister, my friend, you are here today. Maybe for the first time you are coming here. And the Lord is calling upon you. And the Lord is knocking your heart. And the Lord is calling you, come over to me. Come over to me. I'm going to wash you clean. I'm going to wash you clean. Clean, clear, clear, totally, completely, fully. And then you follow the people of God that are on the way to heaven. Call upon the Lord. Call upon the Lord. You need the patience to walk with the Lord. You need the grace to walk with the Lord. Irrespective of the challenges you are facing, you call upon the Lord and say, Lord, here am I. I know I'm passing through one challenge or the other, but I'm going to hold up. I'm going to hold up. I'm going to hold up. Are you holding on? Are you holding on? Are you holding on? Will you hold on to the end? Will you hold on to the end? Will you hold on to the end? The Lord is calling upon you. Hold on to me. I'm going to hold on unto you. He's faithful. He's faithful. He will not abandon you. Whatever you are going through is by your side. Always remember the Lord is by my side. Always remember the grace of God is available for me. He's available for you. He's able to do everything for you. That's why in a consistent way, as you give your life to the Lord, Lord, I want to follow you. I want to follow you. I want to follow you. He has prepared a paradise for us where there have been no pain, where there have been no sorrow, where there have been no anguish. The Lord is saying, I'm waiting for you. I'm waiting for you. I'm waiting for you. At the Eastern Gate, I'm waiting for you. I'm waiting for you. The Lord is waiting for you. In the children's church, the Lord is waiting for you. In the youth church, the Lord is waiting for you. In the campus church, the Lord is waiting for you. In the adult church, the Lord is waiting for you. Nothing should hold you down. Nothing should hold you down. Nothing should hold you down. Nothing will hold you down. That's why you need today, start with the Lord. Begin with the Lord. Begin with the Lord. Begin with the Lord. You have gone away before. You have gone away before completely and totally. Come back today. Come back today. Come back today. The grace of God is available. Babylon has fallen. Don't fall with it. And that's why the Lord has promised us rest. Rest for your soul. Rest for your soul. Rest for your mind. Peace in your mind. Peace in your mind. Not as the world will give. He has the peace of mind for your life. He has the grace of God for you to enjoy your life. And then you keep on going until eventually he welcomes you into paradise. He's stretching forth his hand before you today and say, where are you? Where are you? Where are you? I'm stretching forth my hand to you, and you just come over. I pick you over, and then you fly over your challenges. It's available. In Jesus' name we pray. Jesus' name we pray. The Lord is saying, if today 
You want to give your life to the Lord. And you know within your heart, God has spoken to you. He has challenged you. And he's telling you in that your sin, you want to get out. You want to be free. You are always being bondage to sin. But today, but this day, but this hour, you want to give your life to the Lord. It's a privilege you will not miss. And that's why the Lord is calling you, wherever you are, raise up your hand. And as you raise up that hand, tell the Lord, I don't want to go down with Babylon. I don't want to go down to hell. I don't want iniquity to be my real. Just tell the Lord, today I give my life to you. I surrender my life to you. Whatever has been the challenge on the way, that I need the yoke to be broken, and it will be broken in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you very much for today. Well, thank you for the word of God you have made us to hear, to listen to. You made us to see that Babylon, the great city, has fallen. And that great city, the city we have seen, is the water the people drink. That great city that we go down and go down to hell. I will never rise up again. Father, we we'll pray. As many today have given their lives to the Lord, have decided that they are giving their lives to the Lord and they are coming out of Babylon and they are coming out of Sodom and they are walking over to paradise. I pray you will write their names in the book of life in Jesus' name. As many that have been bondage to sin completely totally holy and the more they want to come out they discover they cannot come out but father they have made a decision today and i pray that decision will be permanent in jesus name as many that have been rising and falling today they are up there next tomorrow than down there and at the end they have made up their mind they cannot be free from sin. Lord, the power that raised up Jesus from the tomb. And he said, I was, a de I was dead, but now I'm a living soul. I pray that that same power will go into their lives. I will quicken their mortal body, their mortal soul, and will make them to live the life of Christ in Jesus' name. And you will write their names in the book of life in Jesus' name. Lord, you have challenged us today that we will not go down with Babylon. Father, we pray, none of us that have heard the word of God today, that have heard this message today, will go down with Babylon in Jesus' name. No matter the challenge, no matter the problem, no matter the circumstances, and the enemy, he say, we are bound ourselves. I will make sure you, he, she, will go down with Babylon, will pray every such bondage of the enemy or that agreement of the enemy to take us to Babylon into the yoke of sin that we're crying and crying in hell forever. We pray you will not allow that to happen to any of us in Jesus' name. You said, if the Son therefore will make you free, you will be free and free indeed. We pray that Father, the power of freedom the power to be free from every shackle of the bondage and the city of Babylon you give unto every one of us in Jesus' name. From now on, 
will be victorious. From now on, we have the power over sin. And sin will not reign over any one of us again in Jesus' name. We just pray that this world we're hearing, Lord, it will not stand against us as a testimony against us on that day and testify against us on that day. It will not in Jesus' name. We believe with your grace we will walk through our lives and by the grace of God that paradise you have provided for us, we will get there. You will get there. We will all get there. And the anointing that is flowing continuously on this pulpit, Father, it will not cease in Jesus' name. Well, thank you because we believe you have answered. In Jesus' name, we we'll pray.